Hey there friends and enemies, Joper here again and today I wanted to talk about sorcerer builds in Diablo 4 after my recent switch from Arclash to Ice Shards and why I switched now after being an Arclash main pretty much the entire run through the game so far. Now first and foremost, play whatever build that you want. If it's working for you, by all means stick with it, have fun. You shouldn't be told that this certain build is the meta, that's all you can use but find the one that's most fun for you that's able to clear the content as you want. I do know though that there's a lot of people who think that certain builds are not good even though they just don't have them fully upgraded, fully corrected and built as they should be to maximize their effectiveness. And so because of that, a lot of these builds rely on just a couple pieces of either armor, or a couple of skills to really make them pop. And without those, they just feel entirely underwhelming. And that's for a long time how my eye shards builds felt as I was trying to use that. It felt like uh, my mana regeneration just wasn't there. I wasn't able to use eye shards enough. And so my overall damage output just wasn't where I needed it to be. Meanwhile, I could use Arclash build and just have consistent uptime on my abilities and not really have to worry about my resource management in the same way. However, as you go on, I just hit recently level 60 and I got some new pieces of gear, a unique that's really, really good. And it really opened up the build for me quite a bit. And so that's why I decided to switch to Frost Shards because now I don't really have a lot of mana management issues, especially if there's a lot of enemies and or a big boss that I can continuously use my Frost Shard turret into. And so now I found that this build is just far and away more fun than the Arclash build where I'm essentially just holding down Arclash and using my other abilities as I go. This one also feels like it has better survivability because I do have two different shields and my teleport instead of just one, which is very, very nice. And that allows me to, again, just frost shard all the time. So overall, I will post a full video with my current build on my sorcerer for ice shards and kind of talk about my mana management and all that kind of stuff. I've also seen some really other, some really fun builds that I want to try once I have more gear unlocked, more paragon points and that kind of stuff. But really, some of these builds essentially are not going to shine until you have the whole puzzle put together, right? So I, I think a lot of people are under the misconception really that you can throw a build together and if it's mostly complete, it'll still be fine. And some builds are like that. There are a lot of builds, especially for other characters with really strong pieces of builds, but not full builds necessarily that can do well enough and really get through most of the content before getting all of the pieces for that build. However, there are other builds in this game that will feel terrible if you don't have all the pieces, if you don't have the right mods on your armor, if you don't have the right skills in place, if you don't have the right enough of your skills unlocked, they just won't feel good because they are so underpowered or reliant on certain resource management that's just not there and that's one of the things that i found with certain builds is that you really have to be specific in how you put them together not all of them like i said but that is something to keep in mind going forward as you're making your build as you're tinkering with stuff this is why i tell everybody that you should be changing out some of your skills, trying out new things, seeing what works for you, trying out some of your different upgrades for your armor sets, because you never know when one piece of your build, you're going to toss it in there and it's going to change everything. Like for example, I have that unique piece, uh, the frost blaze, I think it is. Uh, and essentially what it does is after I uh, kill frozen enemies, it drops another Frost Nova, and essentially, I have my Frost Nova really leveled up. I have, like, an advanced Frost Nova, so that's a lot mystical Frost Nova, so that's making enemies vulnerable, so it's adding additional vulnerable chances because I'm dropping the Frost Nova even more so than just when I use it on cooldown. So, the other thing is, like, I can use my cooldowns to generate mana to continuously use my frost shards if i get low if it's not auto regenerating regenerating because i am hitting vulnerable targets so 
there's a lot of things that kind of synergize together and without all these pieces, it just wouldn't shine in the same way. It wouldn't feel as powerful as it does. And that's something that I always like to tell folks when they're making their builds in Diablo 4 is look at the build as a full puzzle and not just a bunch of, bunch of pieces you're throwing together. And if you do that, if you synergize everything and you get it right, you're going to have some builds that are absolutely going to pop off. I've seen some meteor builds that I really want to try that look awesome. Some uh, zoo builds, which are essentially summoning builds with like hydras and stuff like that, that look like they could be a lot of fun. And I think once I get to level 100, I'm going to do as many builds as I possibly can to try and test these out and see which ones I like the most. But for now, as I'm leveling and as I have pieces that I pick up and new skills unlocked and new Paragon paths push forward as I'm able to unlock those as well, it really does change up how this build functions and how successful it can be. And so not every build is going to be universally good from levels 1 to level 100. Some of them you can keep all the way up, but be flexible in your builds as well. That's something that I think a lot of people take for granted is they, they find a build they see online and they put it together and maybe they're missing a piece or something and it's just not working for them. It's not fitting their play style. It's not doing for them what they want it to do. But if you just tinker with it a little bit, maybe you find a different piece that works better for you, your play style, and how you want to use your cooldowns and your abilities and all that stuff. As we see throughout the game, right? One thing to be ready for as well is that when season one hits, we're probably going to have a meta change as well. So your favorite build previously might not be your favorite build once season one hits as we get either some kind of artifact to uh, change up the way the play style or as we've seen in Diablo 3, you could also get something like uh, just some nerfs and buffs that we're going to see consistently throughout the life cycle of Diablo 4. And so be flexible. Don't rely on just one build. Be ready for when a build gets hit or gets buffed so that way you can test it out and see if it's going to work for you. Changing up builds doesn't seem very prohibitive prohibitive in Diablo 4 is pretty inexpensive with gold as you proceed up the levels so experiment try new things see what works for you have fun with the game don't worry about what's the meta and what's not use whatever is most fun for you that you can beat the content that you want to beat and enjoy the game anyway that's going to do it for me my name is Jopa I hope you had to enjoyed the video like the video if you did subscribe to the channel stay tuned subscribe because you're not going to want to miss my take on the ice shards build i'm going to be posting that in the next couple days as well i'm very excited about that i just got to do a full breakdown i was missing a couple pieces that i wanted to add to it before i posted it as well but anyway i hope you have a good one my name is jopa and i'll catch you all later